This is the Krill cast. I am the Chris. And I am the Will. And it's 2011. 2011. And it's kind of late for a PSP to come out. PSP, PSP game yes, to come it's out. Yes, very late for the PSP. <laughs> but <laughs> that's what I'm going to pick later here. But what did you guys like from 2011, other than the fact that you might have graduated high school like some other people I know? Um, <laughs> what was. is Will's favorite game from 2011? Tell him why he's wrong. No, tell him why he's right, because clearly I am, I am correct. As you can see the gameplay in the background here, it is The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings, or Assassin of Kings, or is it two Assassins? Assassins of Kings. Yeah, okay. Um, which is interesting, because there's only one Assassin. Anyway, so it's a it's a great game. Um, if you played The Witcher 3, I highly recommend going back and playing this one. It's very much a, a very similar formula, but it's not open world. So every, basically, you... you you go through a linear story and you like you end up in one region and then you like you can explore that region but you can't like go outside of the region so it's a lot like finish. the first witcher then yeah it, it is i'm assuming it's very similar uh it's i mean the gameplay mechanics are very pretty much the same it's not nearly as like in depth as at witcher 3 but it definitely it works really well in the story that they're telling it's a lot of politics, so if you like like Game of Thrones, you'll probably enjoy this game as well. There's a lot going on. You don't you don't have to remember everyone's names. You don't need to know what's going on to enjoy it. Uh, there is a dragon you get to fight, which is really cool. There are choices, so like depending on who you side with at one point in the game, changes like the actual story that you go through and the missions that you get. I think the ending is essentially the same, but like the, how you get there changes, which is really cool. Um, and the thing is, it's not like a good versus bad choice. Like, he really could go either way, just depending on how you're feeling that particular time you're playing through it. Um, and, yeah, it's really cool. I I definitely enjoy the love interest in this game a lot. So Triss is the love interest, and you don't get to see Yennefer. And Yennefer is, like, a, a huge main character, obviously, in, this, in the mythos and also in, in The Witcher 3. And what's funny about this is, like, because... I really want Geralt to end up with that character. It's really informing how I'm playing The Witcher 3 right now. <laughs> and it's like, I just am so tired of Yennefer. I'm so I'm like, shut up, Yennefer. <laughs> I want Geralt to end up with Triss. <laughs> well, Triss is in the first Witcher too, by the way. Yeah, well, so like the whole thing about him losing his memory and she like helps nurse him back to health and everything after his encounter with the Wild Hunt. So like there's a I've read the books too so like there's there's a lot going on there and I I really like Triss in the books more which is, is is funny I think she's a much she's a like a better human being overall which is why I don't want I don't want Geralt to end up with the with Yennefer <laughs> um, anyway so but this game is great and at the very end you get to choose so you end up when you learn who the assassin is I'm not gonna ruin it for anyone and then um, this might kind of ruin it but you can choose to fight him or not. So you can kind of be like, I understand where you're coming from. And it's interesting because it does play into the next game at least a little bit. So you actually, like, it, it, it changes some of the stuff that happens in the third game. Hmm. Uh, so it's pretty cool. I do like games that have impacts on other games. So Yeah. I have been playing, I'm going to be playing all three all the way through. I'm in the first one, I'm in the second part of it, and I'm looking forward to this one because it's on a 360, which means it's actually designed for a controller, unlike The Witcher 1, which is kind of a slog to play through on a yeah, controller. Yeah, so actually, now that, sorry, I forgot that you have it on three different systems, though. So if you if you are going to play the, I would definitely get this for the Xbox then, because otherwise the, the Switch version, like, assumes your decisions. So it, it just, like, kind of auto-generates decisions for you, so it may not actually follow the storyline that you set up. No, they ask, they ask in the, in the um, there's a scene where they ask you what you did in the previous games. Okay, well, make sure you actually remember what you chose, unlike I did. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I chose. I know, like, one person that I sided with, and I know what I did with the assassin at the end, but the rest of it, like, I couldn't remember. I'm going to be restarting my Witcher 3 playthrough when I finish the okay. first two games. All right, so this should come as no surprise, although maybe it would be surprising to some people. I love the Persona 2 Innocent Sin what? port to the PSP. I played this game start to finish um, in about 70 to 80 hours, and I loved it. I know it's kind of harder to get into than the newer Persona games, but as a remake, this does a very good job at staying faithful to the original game, which was a Japanese-only PS1 title while also being able to familiarize people with the older Persona games easily. Like, 
it's it's like kind of that perfect balance between some updates to an older game making it english but also retaining what the older game was if that makes sense this game has a great story it's got it's got some of the most ridiculous things like there's a there's a uh, particular uh, German Führer in sunglasses as one of the <laughs> main bad guys. Um, there's this ridiculous looking clown Joker thing. Not we're not talking about Persona Five Joker. We're talking about bad guy Joker from Persona Two. Rumors become reality, which is quite the interesting plot where you can actually feed rumors to some characters and make them into reality in the game. Like mm. if you want your gun shop to be cheaper, you can like say hey. The guns actually cost this much, or uh, something about this person, and then all of a sudden the gun shop's cheaper. It's like, it's kind of a weird wow. premise. Like rumors become reality. So like anything that you want to be reality, like imagine what that could be if you could just spread a rumor and all of a sudden it's real. Like mm. there are um, under this German Führer, there are these ridiculous android like mech mecha, <laughs> not mecha. Um, mechanical robots <laughs> that fight there's the uh um the holy spear that they end up stabbing people with it's and it's the holy spear because it's literally the spear that has the blood of jesus in it it's like what yeah. the heck what is that going on in this game oh yes my this game is all over the place it's hilarious it's amazing it's like old school rpg i'm shocked it was able to be released at all <laughs> in the original game the german fear was a different figure that i'm sure you can picture in your head and he doesn't wear sunglasses, and apparently that was too offensive for the uh, American release, so they took him out and made him the Fuhrer with sunglasses, and they call him the Fuhrer in the game instead of calling him by his actual name, but there's that. Um, and it, this is one of the most over-the-top Persona games I've ever played, and there's a reason why there's a split version of Persona 2. This is like a duality thing where you've got Innocent Sin as this game, and then Eternal Punishment is actually the canonical continuation. And if I gave away why that is, it'd be so many spoilers that I'd have to um, hashtag spoilers this whole video, so I'm not going to tell you all about that. But those two games together are Persona 2. If you don't play both, you don't get the full story or understand why the other half is the canonical continuation of the timeline in the Persona games. But essentially, this game is great. If you haven't played it and you want like old school RPGs, you should play it. Um, so, please tell me why I'm wrong about Persona 2: Innocent Sin on the PSP being mm -hmm. the best 2011 game or 2011 game. Yep. <laughs> and uh, as always, I'm Chris. And I'm Will. Comment below your favorite game from 2011. I think yeah. I made that clear. And we will see you 